Hey, what's mm. inside? Ooh. I see boys. What's up guys? It's Kicter. I'm here with my amazing girlfriend Stitch and we are going to be unboxing the special edition of Golden Terrace, formerly known as Golden Stage. And if you don't know, it is another BL Donme novel that's very romantic, has kissing and sexy scenes. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you want in a Donme novel. Really. <laughs> and romance and a really good plot and a really good message. So, really quick, this is BL. Yes. Really super quick. What is the kind of synopsis? What if you want to get someone in? Tell me the ju tell me the juice. Okay. Why should we read it? So you have a glorious military general. Okay. Okay. Falls on hard times. It's a little bit under the weather. Temporarily out of commission. Goes back to the capital. Is suddenly put into an arranged marriage with the head of the imperial guards for the emperor who is very handsome. He, they have a little bit of a, a past together and have been at each other's throats, not in a romantic, sexy way ever since. So it seems like an ill-fated match. However, they end up being very romantic and loving towards each other and solve a bunch of political intrigue, mysteries, conspiracies going on um, with the hope that they can um, contribute towards a more stable empire in the future. Oh, Arranged marriage between a general and a guard. Head of the Imperial Guard. So the, the head honcho yes. sexy guard. Yes. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. There's also sex pollen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not like not like pollen, but do they have sex? They have a lot of sex. Oh, so let's open this box. <laughs> you take that side. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. I'm, I'm already on it. I'm, I'm gonna get this open before you can even put the scissors together. Beauty is pain. Oh. I'm going. I don't. I. Is that? That is backwards. Nailed it. There we go. Ooh. Okay. You didn't even open it all. Oh. Hey, what's mm. inside? Ooh. I see boys. A smaller box. A smaller box. Oh, Beautifuler this, box. This is heavy. Oh. Do I... Wait, turn it around, turn it around. Wait, oh, oh my god. Look. Whoa. That's so that is, that looks great. Hey, it's made in China. Okay, let's see what extra little goodies we got. Gently extracting the boys. Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob, careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Gentle. Gentle. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we have a little charm. Ooh, a wooden <gasps> oh, charm. Oh, wooden. Oh. Carrying him bridal style. I really like the art style of this okay. too. So the general is the one being carried bridal style. And then um, his hubby, the Imperial Guard, is carrying him. How hot is that? Also, to preface this, Stitch quizzed me on the book. So if you want to know a little bit more about it, you can watch that video right here. Big bodyguard carrying a general. A general who's also a bottom. <laughs> and oh. they're in their red wedding robes, which is why they're wearing red. Aw, that's really sweet. Okay, what else do we get? Looks like there's standees. Ooh. Two of them. Ooh. One for each. Ooh, okay. Not to be that basic bitch, but... He kind of a little bit looks like my wish. <laughs> <laughs> He's just wearing red and has a ponytail. I mean, <laughs> oh, ooh. Look at this. This is, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Wei Wu Shen and Lan Wanji if he was Jing Yao. Lan Wanji if he wore a funny little hat. I get it. I get it. You're not wrong for that. They are not double sided, but who needs double sided when the one side is just so handsome? I mean, you're only going to look at it from one side. It's You know why they're only one side? So, so they that they have to face each other. <laughs> I love them. They are handsome. I really like this art style. Oh, it's so attractive. It's oh. so it's so good. It's just, with his attitude, you would never think like, oh, he is the the small, slightly prettier one. Cause he's always referring. Okay, he's always referring to this one 
as his wife. So you're thinking, okay, he must be like the slender, pretty one. Right. He is straight up the long one, G. <laughs> it's like, this is my wife, and it's this big burrow guy. <laughs> He's like, I've killed men, and I'll do it again. <laughs> and I'm the wife. <laughs> and I'm the wife. But then he's always just like, oh, oh, do you need some tea? Do you need another blanket? Oh. Is someone being mean to you? Do I need to kill them? Aww. Yeah. He's like, no one's ever taken care of me in my life. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> This is, they're really, really sweet. Okay, so he's also holding a little flower. Yes. And he's holding a flower petal. Yes, there is a, there is a flower scene actually when they first meet. A flower scene? A flower scene. I should, can I just go grab, can I read the scene aloud? Well, why don't we oh my God. open the book and do it? We have Golden Terrace in this really nice little red cover. And we got both volumes. There's only two volumes. Yes. Wow, imagine reading a book that only has two volumes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, they've got little dust jackets on them. Very it's nice. Like a little gauzy curtain. And is this, so you have the non-deluxe edition. Yeah, I have the, the, the normie version. And is it? So it's just the, the kind of basic books are just like this and they don't come with the, the dust jacket. Um. There's no hot anime boys on the cover or inside, unfortunately. Mm, there's no picture. This is there's no picture. It's not a picture book, but that's why it comes with the standees. So you can oh, oh! This is a bookmark. It says, "Is my wife way well? Is my wife well? <laughs> she can read. I promise." Is that a part in the book? Yes. So. Okay, I found the first part. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get his his perspective of shooting down the goose and then we're gonna get where that shows up. Okay. okay. The arrow flew away with a whistle. A few breaths later, a whale came from midair. A wild goose at the end of the formation fell straight down out of the sky and landed not far from them. Before Fu Shen could go pick it up for himself, a farmer over there had already brought it over for him. The wounded wild goose was still alive, one of its wings pierced by the arrow. It flapped constantly in Fu Shen's grasp. Yu Chao Ting looked up and praised him. Not bad, very fat. I didn't shoot it down so you could eat it. Fu Shen held his bow in one hand and the goose in the other. I shot this down for my wife to send a message. <laughs> he turned and walked back. Have Du Lung come by my place and bring ointment to treat wounds. <laughs> like he's literally like, okay, I've shot down this goose. Bring over the military doctor to heal it. <laughs> huh? Yu Chao Ting was all at sea. What for? Without so much as a look back, Fu Shen said, so Du Lang can treat its injury. Isn't that goose going to fly south? Well, it can help me out while it's at it. What? Said Yu Chao Ting. Haven't you heard of legends of fish and wild geese acting as messengers? Unfortunately, I lack the extreme beauty to make fish sink and birds alight. All I can use are my martial skills. Having said this, Fu Shen pondered and thought it was a little excusable that, having something to ask of the goose, he had injured it. So he raised the goose he was holding and earnestly said to it, Brother Goose, I'm very sorry. <laughs> the wild goose was speechless. <laughs> Does it actually say that? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. So everyone's like, okay, he's crazy. But here we go. The goose has arrived in the capital. <laughs> Good for it. Or a goose, we'll see. <laughs> a group of people was gathered not far up ahead, surrounding a market stall and observing some fun. Yan Chao Han's ears were sharp. He heard the man with the loudest voice in the crowd say gruffly, I brought this wild goose down outside the city. I never expected there'd be a strip of silk with writing on it tied to its leg. It's like in the old saying, the fish and geese act as messengers. That's what he said. The lore. <laughs> <laughs> a cord was plucked in Yan Han's mind. He suddenly became a little curious and couldn't help coming up to get a closer look. He was tall and even from outside the crowd could see a dead wild goose lying on the chopping block. The man held a strip of silk folded in quarters and was showing it off to everybody. Everyone knows that a northern goose flies south. Now that communications have broken down between north and south, maybe someone in the north has used it to send a message. Someone heckled him. What does it say? Open it up and let everyone get a look. The man said, no, no, this is a rare item. How much for that goose? Yan Shao Han said suddenly. Including is this Yan Shao Han? Hat man, yes. Including that strip of silk. I'll buy them together. The crowd watching the fun immediately made way for him. The man, seeing he was luxuriously attired and had an uncommon bearing, knew that he had encountered a rich fool. He said, five tails of silver. Yan Shohan casually took out his purse and without so much as looking, tossed it right to him. We, we love, love a man with money. <laughs> <laughs> the man weighed it in his hand and found that it was quite heavy. He was so glad he burst into smiles and repeatedly gave thanks, respectfully offering up the silk of strip with both hands. 
Yan Shohan took it, but he didn't open it to read it. Instead, he put it into his sleeve. The spectators saw that he had no intention of displaying it and were very disappointed. Smacking their lips, they dispersed. Yan Shohan turned and left the stall. Behind him, his attendant stepped up to carry the goose away. Now he's going to have his gay moment. Okay. With a breath caught in his chest, Yan Shohan reached a place without any people, then repeatedly took up the strip of silk and let it go. His palm was full of cold sweat. He warned himself again and again not to harbor delusions. It was only a coincidence that Northern Goose happened to be homophonous with Bayan. So the Bayan is the name of uh, Fushen's troop of soldiers. So Northern Goose is basically, I mean, it kind of sounds like Northern Goose, Northern Goose Army. It's not literally Northern Goose Army, but it sounds the same as the name of his army. Yeah. How poetic. Yeah. <laughs> It was only a coincidence that Northern Goose happened to be homo homophonous with Bayan, and letters delivered by geese were an old story that had grown trite with use. He had to be crazy to have impulsively bought a completely meaningless thing like this. But he was too much in need of some old thing from previous haunts to sustain his longing, even if it was only a false image. After calming his breath for a long time, his heartbeat gradually slowed. Yan Chauhan hesitated again and yet hesitated again and yet again. Opting to make the best of his mistake, he gritted his teeth and closed his eyes, finally trembling, pulled the piece of white silk from his sleeve and carefully opened it along the folds. That wild goose had flown a long way from north to south. The white silk tied to its leg was dirty and the writing had gotten wet, soaking the silk with now dried ink splotches. Though it was blurry, he could still clearly distinguish the not very tidy writing because the note contained only four words. Is my wife well? <laughs> What's his reaction? <laughs> he had lived for over two decades, <laughs> such a long time, and now only he was learning that there was really such a thing as a sentence, a handful of words that could break your heart. <laughs> Yan Shaohan was petrified. In a panic, he thought, was this written for me? He was like a person nearly frozen to death in an icy wasteland on the point of losing all hope, suddenly seeming, seeing a gleam of light. It didn't matter whether it was an illusion or phosphorescence. It would still be as if he had grasped the last thread of life-saving gossamer. Leave it there. So, yeah. okay, so they are in an arranged marriage, but they also harbor little feelings for each other. Yes. And at this moment, they're forced apart from each other. Their relationship has been very established at this point. So they're very much in love at this point, but then they are separated because uh, Fushen has to go to war. Like a right. good general. So this is literally like, they're they are just in love, they know they love each other, yes. and they're just separated for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he's hoping for a letter from him so bad, it's making him sick. Yes. And he got a letter for him. So it's just like, I love that, because there's also so much where it's like, okay, the couple got together, now what? Like, what's, mm -hmm. what's juicy left to happen? Oh, like, it's so juicy. <laughs> but it's just yeah. the, the continuing show of love and affection and pining for each other. Pining. I love pining. The fact that they yeah. can confirm their relationship and confirm their love, and then mm -hmm. you still get scenes of pining. I really, really yes. enjoy. Well, what's interesting, too, is even though, um, like, they, they do have feelings for each other and they're open about those feelings, um, it still takes them, like, a while to figure out like what that looks like for them and what that means and like what they're willing to give and take um, because the the situation with their positions and their differing ideals and just their inexperience with love so like even something like this means so much because you can't just take anything for granted <laughs> right is my wife well is my wife well oh my God. do you want to read the flower scene yeah okay it was early spring and the city was filled with young men and women. A group of handsome and elegant young masters riding into the city attracted countless gazes. There were also bold women who tossed toward the crowd their silk handkerchiefs or the various flowers they had been using to play the fight of a hundred plants, their impetus not to be outdone by the old woman tossing fruit at Pang En's carriage. It was an event of unprecedented magnificence. The people stopped in their tracks. There was an unusual bustle outside the city gates. Just then, the clopping of horses' hooves suddenly came from behind. Fully armed and armored imperial guards rushed into the city. The crowd made way automatically. The lead rider called loudly, The emperor's carriages, passages, idlers, keep back! The crowd converged in front of Fushen, the ones at the front retreating again and again, and those at the back for some reason got caught up in a traffic jam. Seeing the imperial guards about to charge up in front of them, Fushen hastily turned his horse's head to make way. But when he turned, he just happened to dodge a flower that had been thrown at the back of his head. 
That flower seemed to have grown eyes. It avoided Fushan and flew straight toward the lead Imperial Guard. The person who had thrown the flower must have used great strength. Fushan even thought he heard the sound of it whistling as it flew. <laughs> Okay. Some girl was back here and was like, I'm going to throw it at this guy. And it went, <laughs> and hit this guy instead. Yep. And then little he... did she know, she was the first Fujoshi shipper. <laughs> throwing flowers at a young master was called being romantic. But throwing flowers at an imperial guard was called an elderly person celebrating a birthday by hanging themselves, thinking they had lived long enough. It was a stupidly suicidal act. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh my god. That's so much... The Imperial Guard raised a hand to stop the flower flying toward him and looked Fushen's way in astonishment. <laughs> Fushen reacted extremely fast. He immediately pulled up his sleeve to cover his face. Like, I'm not here. You can't identify me in a lineup. <laughs> the Imperial Guard was speechless, much like a goose we know. Before there was time to say anything, the Emperor's carriage had already entered the city gates with the Imperial Guards leading the way and people worshipfully kneeling. Fushen and his party were the children of nobles, and two among them had been granted hereditary military posts. By coincidence, they were kneeling at the very front. Emperor Yuantai also noticed these young lordings, who were like cranes amid a flock of chickens, and he deliberately stopped to question them. Among military officials, the Duke of Ying Manor had the healthiest reputation, so Fu Shen was unavoidably singled out to receive some words of encouragement from the emperor. When his legs were hurting from kneeling on the stone tile, his majesty finally had pity and set out back to the pal palace. The Emperor's carriage continued forward. Following this, the Imperial Guards filed past. Fu Shen was kneeling properly, waiting for His Majesty to get further away, when a horse's hooves suddenly halted in front of him for an instant. He raised his head in bewilderment and met a pair of deep, smiling eyes. The setting sun was golden, the dusk and clouds harmoniously combined, and the man before him in the depths of the spring breeze. Fu Shen's gaze slid from his eyes to his hands holding the reins and noticed that he held a white flower in his palm. This was the Imperial Guard from before. There was no time to pull up his sleeve now, even if he had wanted to. All he could do was kneel there, watching the man turn up the corners of his light-colored lips, wave a hand to toss the flower back to him, then urge his horse on and swagger off. Stop. He literally was like, I know what you did earlier, pretty boy. And I'm returning it back. <laughs> yes! Oh my literally. god! Like, this is indecent. This is flirting. Oh my god. <laughs> and he tossed it just right. The flower drifting down caught perfectly on Fu Shen's collar. It was simply as if he had deliberately put it there for him. <laughs> oh my god. He literally thought, he was like, oh man, this looks like I was flirting with him. I have a fucking death wish. And meanwhile, he was like, I'm gonna throw it back. <laughs> it's like, I'm Am I getting flirted with? This is great. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and uh, he didn't throw the flower away. He kept it. But he ends up holding the... He kind of just takes another look at the flower. And he's like, it's a twin lotus. Which, footnote included, two lotus flowers growing on one stalk. A common symbol for a loving couple. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. So romantic. It's very romantic. And I'm very excited to read it now that we have four copies of it. <laughs> so I'm very excited to read it and look at these beautiful figures. If you guys want to buy this book, you can click the link in the description. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Just literally, if you want to read it, this is how you can read it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to follow Stitch on Instagram, who is a professional cosplayer, her Instagram is at one stitch from hell. And yeah, if you like this video and you like to see more stuff about BL and Danmei, click subscribe. Bye.